Welcome to Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, coming to you from the rolling hills of Big Spring Valley in beautiful Alabama. Katherine Lang offers words of encouragement and hope to help grow up lives boldly pursuing peace and joy. Katherine seeks out the rainbows of life while sharing her lollipops of encouragement along her journey. Here on Growing Hope, she features words to help hope and grow courage, all while challenging herself and listeners to radical choices and bold purpose. This is Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, where we are growing hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. And now, here's your host, Katherine Lang. Hello and welcome to Growing Hope, where we are investing just a few moments to grow up hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. I am Katherine Lang and I am your Rainbows and Lollipops host because the more I practice trying to find the rainbows, the more I will be able to see the possibilities in the people I encounter. Because struggles happen. I struggled to get this show done things came up. Squirrels literally danced in my window. (laughs) I mean, a frog in the middle of, I mean, right at the end of October, a tree frog made a late season appearance just to steal a little more of my focus. I know that if I'm struggling, then I'm not the only one struggling. As a matter of fact, the last three meetings and events that I attended had a running theme of one struggle or another because life is crazy. (laughs) And if I'm going to be walking around in this life, then I'm going to have to deal with the crazy. And if I want to do a better job dealing with the crazy, which sometimes includes the people (laughs) that I encounter, then I might want to take a moment and try to see the struggles that they are facing as well. The other day I was driving my son to his karate class when a guy got right on my bumper as we were going up a mountain. Now, I could have gotten over. I could have. I should have gotten over. Instead, I slowed down just enough that he was stuck. Now, you know, he may have just gotten some bad news. Or he may have been late to pick up his sick child. Or he may have just been a jerk and wanted to ride my bumper. I had no way of knowing what he was facing. And yet, I made a judging decision that caused me to react to his actions. And because I reacted to his actions, the cars behind us also were affected. And I had no way of knowing what struggles they may have been facing. Because that's how it works. When I make a choice to react to a situation out of emotions and out of total disregard for others, then my choices radiate on me, out from me, And onto the person and out from the person and pretty much onto all the people within the immediate area and out from them. I don't have to like the way a person is behaving and I don't have to agree with what they are saying or they're doing. But I do have to make a choice in how I'm going to respond. I can react out of emotions Or I can make the effort to see their struggles or to see even their potential struggles because I may not have any way of knowing the true struggles. And then I can choose a response that would better heal or help in those struggles. One, you may struggle to believe, to believe there's hope or that they're, that you're good enough or that you're even worth it. See, I know that a heart struggling to believe can be caught in a web of discouragement that drives negative actions. Two, you may struggle to step out or to step up to pursue your unique design and purpose. I know that when a person is struggling to step, then it may cause that person to lash out at others that are stepping, mainly because they feel like they're getting left behind. Three, you may struggle in doubt because you've heard the negative or lived in the negative so long that there's no other way to see. I know that a life mired down by negatives will grab hold of anyone it can. (laughs) And too often that means pulling down instead of getting pulled up. Four, 
You may struggle in confusions because your lines have been blurred or your path has been raked clear. So you have no idea where you're where to go. I know that a mind caught in confusion struggles to judge the right action to take. And five, you may struggle with stuck, you know, being unable to move forward or to turn around or even to think about making a move. I know that a soul stuck in the darkness or even just stuck where she is will swing around to get free and probably will hit others in the process. The struggle is real and the truth is that we all go through it now and then. I have to make a purpose, purposeful choice to try and see the struggles if I want to stop judging the person and reacting to the actions that the person takes. On most days when I'm driving down the highway, and this particular highway, it's Highway 431 in Alabama, look it up, one of the most dangerous highways in the world, but people drive like crazy folks. <laughs> But most days, what I do is I, I speak to the person. I, I hope that you are safe. I hope that you are aware of what's going on around you. Um, and I say a prayer over them. You know, Lord, watch over them and all the people that they're going to be coming in contact with. And I think about the person more than my need to keep that person from doing what they're doing. It's not my job to dictate how the traffic flows. In any situation, on this highway or in life, my job is to focus on what I am doing, to be aware of what I am doing, and to do the best that I can do. And when I am doing the best that I can do, I will be in a position to not see the actions that you're taking, but to see the heart that is struggling to take the actions that they want to take or that they need to take. I quit thinking about me and what I want, and I begin to think about how can I help you in your journey. Everybody's struggling. Everybody needs the hope and encouragement. Even the, the Rainbows and Lollipops host needs hope and encouragement. And when I make a purposeful choice to see the heart, I can be that encouragement. Life is rarely going to cooperate. And because life rarely cooperates, we are all struggling in one form or another. I can only see your heart and help you in this journey when I choose to see that you are struggling. Growing Hope needs to take a quick break. But when we come back, I'm going to share some more of my experiences on learning how to see the struggles in others so that I can see the heart. Christian Women Affiliate is a free community for Christian women who seek to be all that God has called them to be, with many affordable services, including radio and webinar hosting, and an outstanding review crew. You have many exciting opportunities for promoting your message. Join Christian Women Affiliate today and make quality connections that lead to mentoring and resources that complement your calling and impact our world. Visit ChristianWomenAffiliate.com today. Love rest in me, Jean Hendricks. I hurried up to rest above, but love rescued me. I worried I was not enough, but love rescued me. I came across a midnight fear, but love rescued me. My name I lost, but light was clear. When love rescued me, when love rescued me. A boy of only twelve was caught, when love rescued me. Employed above from hell was bought, when love rescued me. My mind was racing, my heart was pounding, the words called me home. To find my place and my part was found, the Lord was all my own, when love rescued me. When love rescued me, my heart has been set free. Cause love rests in me. In Jesus' name, amen.
I am thankful that Gina allows me to share these words with you, and I'm thankful that he shares the words with me. He is an inspiration and an encouragement, not just because he overcomes in his life every single day, but because he is always, always looking for a way to reach out and touch the hearts of the people that he, he encounters. He has pushed me to be more since the first day that I met him. He has encouraged me to reach beyond the limits and be beyond the box since the moment that I knew him. He is a natural born encourager and I strive every day to encourage as he has taught me to encourage. Do you know why you are here? Do you know what to do with that idea? Do you understand how to put legs to that what? Do you have a plan for when you will do it all? A Place and Purpose offers some tips and suggestions for finding your answers to these questions and then discovering the path to pursue the finish line with boldness. Purchase your copy of Place and Purpose by visiting www.katherinelang.com. Welcome back to today's journey of Growing Hope, where we are learning to see the struggles in others so that we can reach out and be an encouragement and a support in their lives. I am Katherine Lang, and I am your Rainbows and Lollipops host because I dare to see the possibility in all the hearts that I encounter. I would like to tell you that there are rarely those days when I struggle. <laughs> I, 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 would, I could tell you that, but I couldn't tell you with a straight face. Because I live in a house full of men, and I live with teenagers, and I live with a husband, and basically I live with people around me, which means that at some point in time during my day, I'm going to encounter a struggle. And sometimes that struggle comes from me. Things are happening all the time around me, and sometimes I can't get them to line up the way I want them to go, and that causes a struggle for me. And I'm not alone. Every person that I encounter in my day is facing a struggle in one shape, form, or fashion. Now, I may not consider their struggles to be massive compared to what I'm going through. I have a good friend who is bringing home her preemie child her preemie baby for the first time and and she's going through all of this fret and worry and concern over how to care for this teeny tiny little bitty baby I can't I can't relate to that struggle I've never had to be in that position and it makes you know trying to get the teenager to clean the bathroom seem like an a, an unequal struggle but your struggle and my struggle may not match up, but they're equally important to each of us. That's why we don't judge where we are going. We just accept that we are going. That's why I have to just look at the fact that, yes, you are struggling and not put a level or or, or an, equate a power to the struggle that you're going through. If I truly want to be in a position to see the heart of a person and to understand the person and the actions or the attitudes or the behaviors, then I have to be willing to accept and to see the struggles that that person is going through. Because one, you may be struggling to believe. And there is nothing more heart-wrenching to me than a person who does not believe, does not believe there's hope or does not believe that they're good enough, or does not believe they're worth it. I just went through this myself, and I didn't even know I was going through it. I did not think I had the value that others had. I could support you and encourage you and promote you, but I couldn't do that for myself because you are more important than me. That's where I had gotten to, and that was causing me to struggle in my journey. When I am able to see that a person is struggling in that journey, then I can begin to recognize that discouragement has a hold on them, has wrapped around them and is choking them. And when I see that discouragement is on a person, then I can not condone their behaviors, but I can understand where they're coming from. And that makes it easier to deal with their behaviors. 
to you may be struggling to step up, to do what you know to do or what you desire to do or what you hunger to do. And, and a person that is in a position that way will often get jealous because other people are leaving them behind. You're getting it done. Why can't I get it done? When jealousy sets in, then people lash out at the people around them that are doing what they want to do or are reaching their success. A person that's struggling to step will act in a way that's inappropriate to the ones that are stepping, not because they don't want them stepping, but because they so desire to step themselves. I don't have to condone the lashing out, but I can begin to understand. And that's seeing the heart of a person begins with understanding and a willingness to understand that heart. And seeing that that person is struggling to step out will help me understand. Three, you may struggle in doubt. You may doubt that you have the ability because you've heard all your life that you don't have the ability. You may doubt that you can reach the point because you've heard all your life that you can't reach the point. You've been so mired down in negatives that you just don't even see a possibility. It's like drowning. When I was a lifeguard and I was taking a lifeguarding course, my instructor explained to us that a drowning person will latch on to anyone that's around them. That's why it's so easy for a drowning person to drown someone else. And I had to rescue him. And in rescuing him, I took the little raft out and, I, and you know the little life-saving tube and I pushed it out to him. And I turned to start swimming back to safety. And when I turned, he came over the raft to get to me. I was his safety. And when he came over the top of the raft, he almost choked me. <laughs> but I just went under and I backed away because I understood that what he was trying to do was get a leg up. He was trying to get to a place where he could breathe. And so often a person that's caught up in, in doubt is not trying to push us down as much as they're trying to push themselves up so they can breathe. For you may struggle in confusion because your lines have gotten blurred. And in this day and age when there's so much information and there's so many people telling you what way to go, it is so easy to get your lines blurred. <laughs> you know, they have the answer. He has the answer. She has the answer. And in that confusion, you have you struggle to know what is the right action. And five, you may struggle with stuck. You may be unable to move forward. And being unable to move forward, you may just be swinging all with all your might. And in swinging, you hit without even really trying to hit. The struggles are real. And the struggles are happening all the time. And it's not that they're trying to hurt me. Or they're trying to get on my bumper and drive me a little bit crazy. It's that they're struggling in their own life. And in trying to deal with that struggle, it is radiating out onto me. I have a choice at that point. I can continue to radiate the struggles or I can take a stand and make a choice that's going to allow me to see their struggles and reach out in hope and heart. We are all struggling and I have the choice to act out from that struggle or to act up. To move up to a place where I see your struggles and I understand a little more why you're choosing your actions and I choose a better way to respond. Growing Hope needs to take one more break. But when we come back, I'm going to share some foundational ideas to help move up into seeing the struggles. R&D Computer Solutions, serving all your computer needs. We provide low-cost hosting options, complete website development, and online troubleshooting service. No matter what your needs, the staff at R&D Computer Solutions will be there to help you find the answer. Visit www.rdcss.com to learn more about R&D Computer Services, a family-owned and Christian-run quality computer business. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. This is the Growing Hope Review. 
Each week I will share with you one of my favorite Bible studies, books, movies, or even television shows, and I will tell you why it moved me to share. Although I know that we will each get something different out of the things that we encounter, I also know that when we are moved by words, others are likely to be moved as well. This week's review is for Hope for the Flowers by Trina Paulus. It tells the tale of two caterpillars, Stripe and Yellow, and their pursuit to discover the more of life. They have to make choices that are going to bring them to the place that they desire to be. First, they seek it by following the crowd, and they make choices that they're not really proud of. Then they seek it by following their own way, and they're not really happy with the results. And then they find it the way when the, they turn to something unexpected and completely different. Yellow and Stripe discover that when they let go, they can learn to fly. This is another one of those stories that I could read every single day, or at least every single week. It consists only of 147 pages, but so many of those have just a few words or only illustrations. It might be called a children's book, but anyone can learn from the journey that Yellow and Stripe take. The front of the book says a lot about the inside of the book, a tale partly about life and partly about revolution, and lots about hope. When you have hope, then it all becomes possible. Won't you join Yellow and Stripe in their journey? This has been the Growing Hope Review. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. I have a secret. Actually, I have eight secrets, and I'm going to share them with you. Hi, I'm Catherine Lang, and I am the Husband Whisperer. I've learned the secrets for having the perfect spouse. The Husband Whisperer by Catherine C. Lang. Available at most online bookstores, or you can purchase your copy by visiting www.catherinelang.com slash Books. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. Welcome back to this final segment of today's Growing Hope, where we have been growing up the ability to see the struggles in the people that we encounter. I am Catherine Lang, and I am your Rainbows and Lollipops host because I know that when I practice seeing the heart and seeing the possibility in the heart, then I will be able to respond to actions and attitudes from the heart. It turns out that when I have to deal with people all of the time, (laughs) and believe me, eventually, every single day, I have to deal with people. But when I have to deal with them, there are times when I just don't like them. I don't like them because of me, because of where I am in that moment in time, or I don't like them because of their choice and actions and attitudes. Now, When I respond from that place of, I don't like you, it's never pretty. Uh, It just, everybody becomes a little more intense and a little more annoyed and a little more uh, agitated and strife gets control of the situation. But when I take a breath and I see the struggles that, that the people I'm dealing with are going through, then I can respond from a heart position and not from an emotional position. I would like to say that because I deal with men, they're always um, a little more less emotional. (laughs) But any of you that have to deal with men knows that's just a myth. Um, And sorry, men, that's just a myth. (laughs) Men are just as emotional and responsive in emotions as women are. And sometimes I think even more. But... I don't have to respond in kind. I've been working recently on speaking softly and lowering my voice when speaking and being very intentional about the words that I say, especially when there is a a struggle that I recognize. It doesn't always work because sometimes I'm struggling myself. The good news is that I'm not alone. In other words, not only are you struggling, and I I recognize that, but I'm not alone in dealing with the struggles that I'm going to be facing. God 
has come into this world as Jesus, and he has said, I know that in this world, things are going to happen. You're going to have to deal with the crazies. You are going to have to deal with people that aren't making sense because they're struggling in their own journeys. But don't worry. I have overcome the world. So Jesus has already dealt with these struggles for me. I just have to make the choice to settle into what Jesus has done for me. And that's not always an easy place to go because we want to get immediate action. We want to, I like to say it like this, I know God can handle it, but there are days when I look at the people that I'm dealing with and I go, I know God that you've got this, but just this once, (laughs) let me handle it for you. (laughs) But that's not what he wants. He wants us to be above what the world is throwing at us. And he allows us to deal with the world because that's the only way the world can know him is from the way we make the choice to respond to what the world is doing and to how the world is acting. The struggles that I encounter on a daily basis allow me to be a representative to this world of Christ that dwells in me. I can be a blessing or I can be a cursing. And it's all in how I choose to respond. Struggles are going to happen. My favorite struggle moment in scripture is Peter. Because here is a man who was bold enough when he saw Jesus. When he saw Jesus walking on water. I'm sorry, it tickles me to think of this. Peter saw Jesus walking on water. And he says to him, Lord, if that's you call me to you. And Jesus says, "Uh, well, it's me. (laughs) Because how else is he going to respond, right? And so Peter jumps out of the boat without hesitation, jumps out of the boat and begins to walk on water to Jesus. And then he notices the waves. See, that's the crazies. The waves are the crazies. The storms are the crazies. And he begins to focus more on the crazies, the waves, than, than, than he's focusing on Jesus. Peter sees the problems and not the master. And when he begins to focus on the problems, he begins to sink down as well. That's how struggles work. When I am focused on your struggles and I'm responding to your struggles, it creates struggles in my own life and it begins to weigh me down. But Jesus is right there. When I am struggling or when I am dealing with your struggles or when I choose to respond to your struggles and they begin to weigh me down, all I have to do uh, is look up and realize that Jesus is holding his hand out to me and he will pull me up. He is the answer. Paul says in Romans eight eighteen, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. God has something he wants to show the world and he is going to show the world not through anything that he's doing, but through us and what he's doing in and through our lives. How is this working out in your life? How are you overcoming the struggles? Connect with me over at radio at katherinelang.com and tell me how you are doing Until next time, I am Katherine Lang and I am your Rainbows and Lollipops host because every day holds a promise of more and every action contains the power of possibility. It's not about what the world says or even what the world shows. The strength of hope and encouragement will and does push through the limits and the walls of this world. My prayer is and always will be that the words I share are helping establish foundations of hope that will shatter the delusions of the world around us. Remember, be blessed and be a blessing. Thanks for joining us this week for Growing Hope with Katherine Lang. Katherine is a leader in encouragement, a networking specialist, and your hope smith extraordinaire. To learn more about Growing Hope, visit Katherine's website at www.katherinelang.com. That's www.k-a-t-h-r-y-n-l-a-n-g.com. Catherine is also available to speak or teach at your next event. Use the contact form on the website or email Catherine with queries or questions at contactus at 
If you are looking for more hope and inspiration for your week, you can sign up for the Reflections column that mails out each Sunday at www.katherinelang.com slash reflections. And be sure to join us back here each week for Growing Hope, where Catherine shares her heart for encouragement and her vision for hope. Until next week, keep watching for that place where your heart is open to pursue the extraordinary.